morning. I'm Reverend Nicole Riley, lead and teaching pastor here, and want to welcome you to worship, whether you are joining us here in person or you are with us online. If you'd like to follow along with today's sermon notes, you'll find those in the church app. And today might be a day to follow along with them because over these next four weeks, we are doing a new series called Beyond the Basics. And this idea of this series comes from an experience that I had when I was in my 20s. When I was in my 20s, the church that I attended used to have a time at the beginning of every year to review some of the faith basics. And I found that so helpful. Because I think for all of us, there are parts of our faith we don't know about or we don't understand as well as we wish we did. Uh, So I think every church would really benefit from kind of pausing once a year and saying, what are the things we really want to dive into this year? Um, For some of us, it will be things that help us um, just renew and um, remember. And for some of us, it'll be, wow, that was brand new or that really took my understanding to the next level. So we will be talking about today the Trinity And then in the upcoming weeks, we'll look at the Bible and prayer, and then we'll end with salvation. And then each week, there's also a symbol that we'll use as a way to either teach about what it is or um, to take us to a little deeper level. So you can see all four of the symbols on our slide as we begin. So here's what I want to do today as we talk about uh, the Trinity. I want to do some kind of um, basic information about it, something that often gets us a little caught up. Then I want to talk about a phrase that God is three in one. And then I want to look at where we find the Trinity in our scripture. And then at the very end, I want to talk about so what? Does it matter how we understand God? How does that affect how we live our lives? So if you are not a theology person or I start talking and you start thinking about lunch, I will draw you back at the very end because how this applies to our lives, I think, is what's really exciting about understanding the Trinity. So before I jump into it, I want to talk about a language issue, and this can make things even more confusing than they already are. So in today's world, a lot of times people will talk about the Trinity as God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. A lot of times they drop Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and just use the term God. There's a lot of reasons for this. Um, Some of it is calling God Father has kind of fallen out of fashion. Some of it has to do with the fact that um, people are concerned with how a father is, of course, male, and God really transcends any kind of maleness or femaleness, and so maybe it's not the best term. Um, Some people also have lifted up that in their lives, their fathers were not great examples of love and care. And so when we talk about God as Father, it's not something that they really want to connect God with because of their own experience with their Father. So there's a lot of reasons for it, um, but the problem with it is, is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all God. And when we just use the term God for the Father, it can get confusing and stop us from really understanding. So today, I will use the term uh, God the Father, or the Father, as I talk about the first person of the Trinity. Now, if that doesn't work for you, that's fine. You might use God the parent, or sometimes people will substitute God the creator. 
So either way, however you do it, I'm just going to use today the traditional language and the language that Jesus used. So let's jump in and start with the first of our, how many texts do you think I got today? Three. First of our three texts. This is 2 Corinthians 1, 18 through 22. As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Silvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no. But in him it is always yes. For in him every one of God's promises is a yes. For this reason, it is through him that we say the amen to the glory of God. But it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us by putting his seal on us and giving us his spirit in our heart as a first installment. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. Now, I wanted to start with this text because when we talk about the Trinity, when we talk about God as three, I think it helps for us to start with a text that reminds us that we follow a God who says yes to us, a God who is for us, a God who wants to know us, and who wants to be known by us. This is not a God who wants us to be confused by who he is. And so I start with this text because it's about God says yes and wants to draw us in, not confuse us and distance us from him. What I want us to keep in mind as we talk about the Trinity is this idea that God always says yes to us. God is always seeking to draw us closer to him. And that our understanding of God is important because of that. It should not be a barrier to our relationship with God. Let's start with something I find incredibly helpful as we talk about the Trinity. And that is that the Trinity is the way we talk about how we experience God. When I was putting together my sermon, I had a really hard time this week because there is so much you could say about the Trinity. And after I thought and prayed about it, I thought really what I need to do is talk about how I've come to understand the Trinity. And so for me, one of the important pieces is that the Trinity is the way we talk about how we experience God. And the experience part is the really important part there. As Christians, we say that when we experience God, and when we look at the biblical witness of how people experienced God, we see and experience God as a father, a creator, a provider. We experience Jesus as someone who teaches us the way to live and who died and rose for us. And that we experience God as the power of God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is not three gods, but one God known to us, experienced by us, in three ways. So, while the Trinity is the belief that while we experience God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are not three gods, but one God that we know in three ways, that we experience. I know this is a confusing piece for us, because when we talk about Trinity, we're trying to use human language to talk about God, which of course is difficult for us to do. So let's spend a little more time with this idea of three and one. First thing I want to share with you is about the Hebrew word for one, which is ehad. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
So this is an important text from Deuteronomy 6, 4. And the word for one doesn't only mean numerically one, it also means unity. So, let me give you an example. When a couple is married, we talk about how they become one. We don't mean they become one person. We mean that they are not numerically one, but that they are united, that they are a unity. Uh, from Genesis 2, it says it this way. It says, the two shall become one, ekad, flesh. So the big idea here for us as Christians is that it's not about the numerical one, but it is about this important and essential idea in God and in people of unity. So for Christians, when we speak of the Trinity, we're not saying God is mathematically one. Instead, we're pointing to what some theologians have called a compound unity. I don't know if that helps or makes things more confusing. We find it helpful to say that God is not only the roles that, the, the names that we think, but also the roles that we think, what God does. This also helps me as I think about how I experience God. You may be familiar with in your life that the Trinity is sometimes not called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but is called Creator and Redeemer and Sustainer. This widens our understanding to show us that God is more than just names. God is who, the one who creates us. God is the one who redeems us, and God is the one who sustains us. So the Trinity is how we experience God. That's an important thing to hold on to. The Trinity is about unity. And the Trinity is not only about the names of God, but what God does, create redeem, and sustain. Now, is this idea in the Bible? Is the idea of Trinity in the Bible? Well, the word Trinity does not appear in the Bible, but the concept of Trinity that God has experienced as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in the Scriptures. And in fact, we know it's been part of things from the very beginning, that the earliest churches baptized people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's what we say today when we baptize. So let me share with you two texts that help us see a little more about how the Trinity is in the Scripture. The first one focuses on Jesus and the Father, and the second one has all three together. So let's start with John 14. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Now, there is much about God that is a mystery, and as we talk today, there are so many things we're going to say that just fall short of explaining this key concept and the glory of God. But Christians believe that for us to discover who God truly is, that we would do well to begin with Jesus. In this second text, we hear how Jesus says that, his words and his way 
revealed to us who God the Father is. And between Jesus and the Father, there is a unity of purpose. There is a unity of will. There is a unity of being. Uh, to see Jesus is to know God. This is helpful as we talk about the Trinity, because if there's nothing else you get from today's talk about the Trinity, what I want you to hear is that if we want to know what God is like, that it is good to begin with Jesus, with his teachings. And I say this because in my own life, that has been an important piece for me in understanding who God is and how God calls me to live. When I focus on Jesus, I get that sense of what it's all about and what it means to be a person of faith. Many times people will come to me and say, I just don't really know what Christianity is all about. And I always will say the same thing. Have you looked at Jesus' teachings? Because Jesus' teachings are where we find our practices, our way of being people of faith. We'll talk about that a little more at the end. Let's look at the Holy Spirit now. Now, you may remember we did a whole series on the Holy Spirit uh, last year, and if you would like to and you did not catch that, I recommend it to you because there's a lot to say about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of God among us. We also heard about the Spirit not too long ago, over Christmas, as we heard about how Mary, Jesus' mother, became pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our third text today takes place as Jesus begins his ministry. And in this text, we see all three of the Trinity. This is Luke 3, 21 through 22. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And he was praying, as he, and as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. In this text, we see the Trinity. We hear of Jesus and his baptism. We hear of the Holy Spirit, and we hear of this voice from heaven, which we talk about as the voice of our Heavenly Father. The Holy Spirit is not new to our scriptures. In fact, the Holy Spirit is found in the Old Testament, in our Hebrew scriptures, over 75 times to talk about God. But what's different is in the New Testament, which is, you know, is a much smaller book than the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit and the Spirit's place in our life is referenced 275 times. So the New Testament has much more of an emphasis on the power of God among us. And this is not a generic power like the force be with you. This is not an impersonal force. The Holy Spirit is talked about as having intellect and passion and will, and that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. In short, the Holy Spirit has personality and is fully God, just like the Father, just like Jesus the Son. And as we speak of the Holy Spirit, we should say him and not it. Although, there is quite a lot of discussion around, is the Holy Spirit the part of the Trinity which is feminine? So let me say a word about that. The Holy Spirit in the New Testament is talked about with a masculine pronoun, although the word spirit by itself, pneuma, is actually gender neutral. But the Hebrew word for spirit, ruach, is feminine. We hear about it in Genesis 1. But here's the thing for us, and this is sometimes a challenge to understand, is that the gender of a word in Greek or Hebrew 
has nothing to do with gender identity. You know, we use pronouns as a way to talk about gender identity, but in Greek and Hebrew, that's not what they function as. And so for us, you could say the Holy Spirit is female. No one's going to stop you. I know if I said that on a Sunday morning, you'd hear nothing more that I said after that, right? I tend to just use the masculine pronoun since that's what the scripture uses. But I think it's, it's, there's a, an openness there to think about that and to think about the Holy Spirit in a variety of ways. And so let me summarize so far what we've talked about. First, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are equally God. They are co-eternal, which means that they all existed from the beginning of time. It's not like there was one God and it broke into three parts, or it's not like God had a baby God. They are co-eternal, always existing. And the Trinity is one in essence, nature, power, and unity. Okay, so if you've completely tuned me out and thought about what you're going to have for lunch, come back now, because we are going to look at not theology, but something incredibly practical for all of us. We're going to look at why this matters, and I want to share with you two things. The first is, the Trinity models for us the kind of community we are called to be. This is huge, and we don't often lift this up. The idea that God is three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that they've existed together since before the start of time, that they are three equal beings, models for us an understanding of community that is about mutual love, service, and equality. Our God, in his very nature, is not a hierarchical God. Our God, in his very nature, is a God of equality. And because of that, God calls us to be people who treat one another as equals. It's like this three-leaf clover all three parts are equal. All three are together. They are three, but they are one. This symbol of the Trinity is one of my favorites, and not just because I'm very Irish, but because of the equality of it as we see it. Now, it may be huge news that God not only calls us to be in community, but that God calls us to communities that don't practice hierarchy, but practice mutual love and service and care for one another. How can we live that out? How might we live that out in our lives? How can we be about this understanding of Trinity in our families, at our job? How would we live differently with one another if we truly embraced this understanding of the Trinity? It's an interesting question, and one that I don't have answers for today, but one that I think about quite a bit. Second, the second reason that it's important to understand the Trinity is that the Trinity gives us clarity on how we are to live. You know, if we had only a heavenly father and we looked toward our heavenly father for how we are to live, I think there's a lot of us who would not find what we needed in order to know how we live out our faith. But since Jesus and the Holy Spirit are equally God, we have Jesus' teachings. We have the example of the Holy Spirit's power among us. And this gives us real clarity on how we are to live. God among us in Jesus has called us to love God with all we are, to love our neighbor as ourself, to forgive those 
who have wronged us, to love our enemies, to not judge, to live a life of service and humility, to care for the lost and the least. And that all this was about, bringing about the kingdom of God that Jesus came to begin in his life. God's way among us is clear, and while it is much bigger than we can do on our own power, we have the power of the Holy Spirit who can live and work in us so that we might live in the way of Jesus. It is easy to say we don't know what Christianity is or we're not sure how we are to live our lives. But I want to point you to Jesus' teachings. That shows us God's way among us. It shows us God's kingdom among us. And God, as Trinity, gives us clarity about how we are to live. What I wanted us to see today is that how we understand God, how we understand our faith, affects how we live. Today, we started with talking about the Trinity, who helps us see that we might know God as Trinity, and that helps us understand what it means to be a person in the world, how we're to live with each other, how we're to live our lives and practice our faith. So, as our first text said, our God is always saying yes to us, inviting us into relationship with him. And so may we today embrace our faith as it takes us beyond the basics. Let us pray. Okay.